It's time. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show live on WBON TV and on radio at WEKY, WKXO, and WIRV. Support your favorite team with apparel from Campus Warehouse and join us here on the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show. Also brought to you by Bishop Small Engine Repair and Nuevo Vallarta. And now let's go live to your host, Michael Watkins and Samantha Burford. Good evening, everyone, and welcome in to the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show live again tonight here at Jack Burford Chevrolet. Samantha, we are excited to be here once again, and we hope everybody had a safe and enjoyable 4th of July weekend. Did you have one? Uh, well, the weekend didn't get started <laughs> off right, but uh, we, we had a good 4th of July day and you know, celebrated the wife's birthday over the weekend as well. So that's it's, good. it's always a busy weekend for us. But, yeah, didn't have a, a good start to it, that's for sure. And, it, and it seems like, you know, how Christmas lasts many days, yeah. especially for children. Well, it seems like the 4th of July lasts several days. Because you does. can go to neighborhood parties and see neighborhood fireworks. And cookouts. And 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 cookouts. And so maybe because it was on a Monday and everybody celebrated Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then even today. Yeah. So we had family all together today. So it's it's lasted four days, which it I'm is, not complaining. I love it. It's been fun. And I think with the 4th of July, you know, it's it's not been like extremely hot either. It's been right. rather it's enjoyable been nice. weather for this weekend too right, saturday so. night i had a jacket and yeah. watching fireworks and had a uh, <laughs> little well, that's how it was last on. night too it was a little bit chilly whenever the fireworks started over at lake reba last right. night but and they were gorgeous they were, thank you as to always. the city of richmond yeah. it was fantastic so well we started off the weekend thursday night samantha you were there for the a sun launch event uh, that was supposed to be outside over at the richmond center ended up moving inside pouring uh, the rain yeah oh it was and it was <laughs> all day chilly thursday as well yeah. with, with the weather but uh I, th I think i saw over 400 people were there for the event in and out of buffalo wild wings celebrating this new move for EKU into the Atlantic Sun Conference. I'm going to say yes to that because it was the most people I have yeah. ever seen in Buffalo Wild Wings. It was difficult maneuvering around yeah. because there were so many people. And what a way to start off this new conference. Like, people were ready for it. People were excited to be there. Yeah. And people were eating and enjoying and having a good time. And they introduced all the coaches, they so did. I know we're going to talk a lot about that. Yeah, all 16 coaches, you know, in EKU and all 16 of its athletics teams officially joined the A-Sun Conference. It's coming from EKUsports.com. All EKU teams will be immediately eligible for conference awards, postseason play, and NCAA tournament automatic bids. And that was one thing that when we talked to Matt we last did. week. I asked him that question He last brought that Monday. up, and he's like, listen, that was a driving force for us is that we were going to be immediately eligible to compete in these postseason tournaments for all the awards and have the right to try to get some of these automatic bids that the conference gets. And rightfully so. They deserve that. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes it can happen things, you know, you're working out the deal to make this happen, and they're like, okay, no, this is something yeah. that we're not going to falter on. But they did it, and congrats to them because I think it's a great move. Yeah, Roan said in his you know press conference that they could not be more excited to start competing in the ASUN conference. And from the conference's beams of students first, impact, connect, and rise to its leadership at the conference office and on its campuses to the, its footprint, the ASUN and EKU are aligned for our student athletes, students, alumni, fans, and for the entire university community. This is an exciting time to be a colonel as we begin to add to our storied past and make new history. And again, you could just see, I mean, you know, I, I saw Greg Stottlemyre was there, the voice of the colonels. Right, uh, you know, I see Tony. Look at that table right up front. Tony DiGregorio, who you know, yes. was a uh, you know, former EKU football player, now on the staff over at Madison Southern. He was there. And just seeing some of these faces that, you know, are big here in the community, going over to support EKU and now its athletic journey into the ASUN Conference. And the Alliance will feature Central Arkansas, Eastern Kentucky, and Jacksonville State from the ASUN Conference, and Abilene Christian, Lamar University, some Sam Houston, and Stephen F. Austin from the WAC. And the ASUN, uh, this is coming together with, will begin sponsorship of scholarship football in the football championship subdivision, the FCS, for the 2021 season only. The ASUN Conference and the Western Athletic Conference have agreed on a one-year football scheduling alliance. Again, and that alliance will feature Central Arkansas, EKU, and Jacksonville State from the ASUN Conference, Abilene Christian, Lamar University, Sam Houston, and Stephen F. Austin from the WAC, and the seven schools will play a single 
round robin with each institution having three home contests and three road contests. The team with the highest winning percentage shall receive the automatic qualification to the, to the 2021 FCS playoffs, and the primary focus of the next ASON expansion phase will be to move six football members that play scholarship football. This will allow the ASON to qualify for an FCS playoff spot without relying on a conference partnership. So that was a big thing with football, you know, right. trying to find the – because, you know, Bellarmine doesn't have football. Some of those other right. schools don't have football within the conference. So trying to find those teams to make a football conference was to a big thing as well. Able, and, and that came a little later, yeah. correct? So I, I think it's worked out. And I actually got to meet the uh, ASUN commissioner. Very nice guy. Very energetic. Very optimistic. And he is looking to, to even further build yeah. this you know, conference. So. And, you know, you, you think of some of the, you know, if you are a high school sports fan, let me kind of tie it in for you with some of the names that are playing in the A-Sun right now. On the basketball side, you know, Kyle Road, who plays at Liberty, that's a kid that uh, some Southern or some Central basketball fans might know because he was a big pain in the side for Madison Central a few years ago. Uh, but you've got Ben Johnson, who was a Mr. Basketball this year. Right. He played at Lexington Catholic. We Lexington all know what Catholic, kind of player yeah. he is. Basketball. He's going to be going to Bellarmine, so he'll be, he'll be you know, a conference. guy that we'll see re pretty regularly as well. So uh, some of these schools, you know, whether it be football or basketball, and I think this kind of gives a chance within the A-Sun to kind of shine a lot on some of those other athletes, you know, like track and field at EKU who had, you know, a play, uh, an athlete running track who was really, really good mm -hmm. this year. Uh, you've got volleyball, who will kind of you know up its ante a little bit as well. And beach um, volleyball. Beach volleyball. I didn't yeah. realize they had beach volleyball until they introduced the brand new coach, and uh, I believe she just had a baby too. Yeah. So and I could be getting those. That's two John. No, that's 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 the that's the uh, the regular. The volley, regular the volleyball gym, coach. I don't know what it's called. Okay. But there's yeah. a volleyball coach and then a beach volleyball. Yeah. So coach. the regular volleyball so, coach yeah, is. She just had the baby. Yeah, yeah. And then the other coach. Yeah. He, so I got to meet all of them. Yeah. yeah. Well, all 16 coaches were there, and I think that's kind of cool. You know, and, and, you know, obviously what they're trying to do is build the relationships within the community and try to get people excited about this move and about the conference and about what they're doing with EKU. And uh, with these additions, you know, the A-Sun expands its geographic footprint to seven states now, which is big, and that was one thing that Matt talked about he last did. week. The, the ability to go into new cities and reach EKU a lot right. and bring them back into watching you know, EKU sports. And they're going to do that. You think about it. Now they're going to be playing these new teams. They're going to be able to reach new alumni. Yeah. Not, I shouldn't say new, but new to that that community area, community yeah. in that area. Well, you're so. in Alabama now, Arkansas, Florida, Georgia, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Virginia, and it now features 12 of the top 80 media markets in the nation as well, and seven of the top 50. Right. So again, what that does is kind of, again, just makes it EKU more known. Right. It's going to be kind of and a name that you're going to have to. Yes, it's that's a big thing too. All about recruiting. Yeah. So they're going to get more fans. You hope that even the adults that went to EKU, yeah. the alumni, they're going to have children. So you hope that they're going to be like, you know what? Look how great they're doing. And yeah. you get to watch them. And I go think, to the games. You know, when you can sell the university that, and you get all these points that you can make now when you go talk to a recruit, right. it'll just make it easier to kind of get that recruit to come to well, EKU. Well, they're going to be in some of the bigger cities. We talked about they're going to Louisville. They're going yeah. to be in Nashville. They're going to Fort Myers. So they're going to be in some brand new cities and bigger cities at that, too. Yeah, and membership in the ASUN Conference gives EKU a strong footprint in a region of the country that is already growing as well. And the ASUN has university is in two of the top 11 fastest growing states in the nation and the partnership will offer access to prospective students alumni and donors nearly 100,000 EKU alumni live in the ASUN footprint and excellent media markets throughout the ASUN offer opportunities to reach those audience uh, EKU football season tickets for the 2021 season are on sale now through the EKU ticket office, they can be purchased for as low as $6.50 per game with premium chairback seating available for less than $35 per game. And overall packages start at just $39 for the 2021 season. And they can be purchased online now. You can contact the EKU ticket office at tickets at eku.edu or call 8443-GO-BIG-E with additional questions. And I think if you haven't bought your tickets now, folks, 
I think they <laughs> probably it. sold some now. tickets that next day because of how oh, yeah. I think in exciting that event was on Thursday night. There was so much excitement, like you said, but also the optimism was there. Yeah. Uh, Matt even told us last Monday, and if you haven't watched the interview yeah. from last Monday night's show, go back and watch it because it was fantastic. We learned so much stuff from the athletic director at EKU. Yeah, and, and, that's, and we had Robert Simpson on the week before that, yeah. and both those guys are helping kind of lead the charge for EKU into the ASUN conference. And I think it's exciting for in, in many reasons. And you know, we talked about the sports itself, but it's also big for the university because, you know, if you get the university out there into these new footprints like they're talking about in Florida, you know, when I was at EKU, I would say a lot of the kids that I knew were from here in Kentucky. I didn't really meet a ton of kids that weren't athletes that weren't from here in the state of Kentucky, maybe some from Indiana, neighboring states. With this move now, you're putting the university out there into some bigger states. Right. And you might draw just a regular student into the university now because of where it's at. And that's and the goal. And that is the goal, exactly. <laughs> to, and it, it's, it's exciting for sports, but it's also – a move it's for the university in general. Exactly. It's yeah. You're you're looking at numbers. It's all about dollars, and it's going to move the university forward. And, yeah. and I think this group between the athletic di director and the EKU president, uh, Mr. McFadden, they're looking at the possibility of moving this university forward, getting new students, and gaining more money for yeah. the university that's how it gets bigger and that's how it gets better have you ever heard the saying if it don't make dollars it don't make sense <laughs> that's the, i think that's kind of the driving force here with eku and you know i think this was all kind of put in place we, and, we and even not knowing what was going on we kind of knew something was going on last year when they dropped out of the ovc to right. play their own schedule Football. and i think it go it's, it's paying off it's paying dividends here right. as they move into the a sun conference now they and talked about that Thursday night, yeah. too. Uh, Walt Wells talked about that a lot. He was like, we made that bold move, and it worked out. Yeah. Because he said our athletes have now been on campus for weeks. And he said some of the other groups that stuck to football in the spring, their athletes aren't back yet. Yeah. So we're prepared, we're well ahead, and we are moving forward. And he was excited about it. And I'm excited they've got six home football games yeah. this fall. So I'm extremely excited about tailgating, getting inside the the uh, arena, and actually just watching some good football. Yeah, and Roy Kidd Stadium is always a good place to yeah. watch a game at. And if you've not been there before, and you can get your tickets now. Don't forget about where you can get them at, folks. We appreciate you hanging out with us here on the Monday night. And uh, we were off today, so it took us a little bit extra effort, I think, <laughs> to get up here and get everything set up yeah. and get ready for tonight's show. And you but know what? If anybody wants to know any anything about EKU. Yeah. You can go to their website, but anything about the sports, ekusports.com. Yep, there you go. And That's where I'm at right now, getting all this information yeah, at. Follow so. them on Twitter, follow them on yeah. Facebook. And I think, you know, the age of social media has created a way to stay up to date with everything. And uh, if you have not done so, make sure to go check out those social media pages yeah. on Facebook and Twitter, even their Instagram page. They're all active yeah. on there. And it's all about promoting the kids and promoting the university. That's the big thing. And now with that, you know, the new NIL, you can do that a lot easier as well. And we'll have some news on that yeah, later on Yeah, they came out the with show. on Thursday when it became available, yeah. when that was the July 1st rollout as well. They had a big rollout on that as well. We have a, a big show for you tonight, folks. We've got Braden Carson, also known as Fuzz Carson, coming on here in just a few moments to talk about uh, running some track. And he's, he's going to have a big competition coming up later on this uh, month. But he's also... Uh, more than just a track athlete and a track star, this young man is a great athlete. He's a good football player as well. So we'll talk to him Apparently here in he a few can moments. Do it all. If yeah, you can do and he can. He, you can with do the, it all. I'm, I'm jealous of the hair. I got to talk to him about the hair and, and what's, <laughs> what is his regimen on that. We've also got Berea uh, football coach Frank Parks coming on to talk about you know his transitioning into the new role with Berea football and uh, talking about the schedule for them coming up here later on tonight. We are live at Jack Burford Chevrolet, folks. Don't go anywhere. Fuzz Carson coming back with us on the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show. We have large SUVs. We have the best-selling SUV in America. We have great brand new trucks. Come in today because we want to buy your cars, trucks, or SUVs. And in the 
spring of 1992, Bishop Smollinger Repair was born in our mom and dad's barn in Estill County. Then in the fall of 1992, we made the move to Madison County, where we are today. With the support of our family, customers, and community, we have continued to grow in the outdoor power industry. With a full line of products from Cub Cadet, Grasshopper, Echo, and Shindawa, we can help you tackle your yard so you can enjoy it with your family. Bishop Small Engine Repair, where our focus is our customer. Stop on in, 119 North Estill Avenue in Richmond. We can't wait to see ya. Support your favorite team with apparel from Campus Warehouse in Richmond. Whether you're an EKU fan or you're a part of the Big Blue Nation, Campus Warehouse has something for you. Stop by and see their new line of Old Road t-shirts because, guys, we know Saturdays are for the boys. Plus, they have the cutest seasonal tees for the ladies. And Campus Warehouse now carries the new line of tees for the kiddos as well. Visit CampusWarehouseRichmond.com or stop by their location in the Richmond Center next to Buffalo Wild Wings. Who makes the best meal in Richmond? Nuevo Vallarta. Friendly service, a place that's good for kids and good for groups. Head to Nuevo Vallarta on Big Hill Avenue in Richmond. Nuevo Vallarta is known for warm hospitality, great prices, great food, and the best margaritas and fajitas in town. Doesn't a huge 32-ounce ice-cold beer sound great? Start with an appetizer, order a la carte, or choose from their huge menu of Mexican favorites for grown-ups and kids. Nuevo Vallarta on Big Hill Avenue in Richmond. Richmond. Patrick O'Neill has been serving Central and Eastern Kentucky since 1995. When someone is accused of something they didn't do, or when a good person makes a mistake, they need the best representation they can find. And that's Patrick O'Neill. Whether it's criminal defense, social security, disability, personal injury, workers' compensation, or deeds and wills, when you need legal advice, trust the expertise of Patrick O'Neill. He will get you the money you deserve. His office is located in Jackson, but Patrick practices all over Central and Eastern Kentucky. For more information or for a free consultation, call 606-66. Welcome back in here to the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show, live here at Jack Burford Chevrolet on this Monday night. Samantha and I joined by Fuzz Braden <laughs> Carson. and Yeah, I can't call you by your first name. I want to know where that nickname yeah. came from. Yeah. Let's talk about that first before we get into anything else. Okay. Um, it's more of a secret, but yeah, I can <laughs> can we Can we let the secret out? <laughs> yeah, yeah okay. for sure. Right. Um, uh, when I was born, when I was a baby, I was just covered with peach fuzz. And most people think that there's really more to it. There's really nothing more to it. That's it. Okay. Well, there you I go. We've got that's the fantastic. Yeah, that's though. a good nickname then. So it really wasn't a coach that called you, you know, a, like a football nickname. No, that's something like that stuck yeah. with you for a while too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So this See, is a I've family got, nickname. I've got several self-proclaimed nicknames, but none that anybody else has given me. But uh, that's a pretty good story there. So. Uh, first of all, congratulations Thank on you. qualifying yes. for the Junior <laughs> Olympics. And Thanks. So y in your third, took oh, you took third in your first decathlon very, very ever. First. So talk about the training that went into all this before we get into kind of what all went, what took place down in in the competition. Um, I really didn't have a lot of time to go into it before the event in Knoxville because I had eight days. Yeah. To, uh, <laughs> and I had really only worked on jumps, and I've done. No, wait. Why did you only have the eight days? For those Just kind of found watching. out when it was. And right. And then you entered into it and said, okay, I'm going. Well, I would, but I had high school state. Oh, I, that's right. Yeah. I, I was uh, For track. Right, for track. And I was doing high jump in that, so I had to focus on that. Right. Because. See, a lot of people don't realize that they go back to back. Yeah. Right, yeah. So right after that, I had to hit all those events pretty hard. And it was pretty tough to wrangle in eight days, but we did it. We're good. So what made you go, I think I can do a decathlon? Well, I had just tried out the events a couple of times just for, you know, just to do it. And I had figured out I wasn't that bad at it. And people had told me, you know, coaches had told me, my dad had told me, you'd make a really good multi. And they'd say, like, I have the body for it. I could really, I could really do good in it. So I just tried it out one day and signed up for it and realized that I wasn't that bad at it, obviously. So... Yeah, I guess that's it. I guess so for people that don't realize what a decathlon, like all 10 events, tell us all 10 events. You got shot put, discus, javelin, high jump, long jump, 110 hurdles, 100 meter dash. That's seven, right? Uh, yeah, pole vault, the 400 and the 1500. Man. Which yeah. one do you love? Which one do you least like? The jumps and... Javelin, I think those are my favorite because javelin is just fun. <clears throat> I just do that for, for fun, really. It's like it's like field day to me in the okay. throws. But 
Definitely the fifteen hundred and the four hundred. Those are those are the hardest for me. Yeah. Well, but you're such a good athlete, and you could tell. I mean, when you walked in here, you could just see. Okay, yeah, this kid is an athlete. <laughs> and there's there's play. I mean, we have a ton of people like that here in Madison County that we cover and see on right. a daily basis. But with 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 Braden here, obviously. I don't see him on the football field, and I've seen right. him make plays on the football field. But you take the helmet off and the pads off, and he still looks like a player an that athlete. could an athlete. And that's that's one thing that I think I noticed first thing about you, especially when you walked in the door in here. Yeah. And I've seen pictures of you, but uh, you know, so in this decathlon, it was your first ever. You took third place in the AAU region meet in Knoxville, Tennessee. The top four in each region qualify for the Junior Olympics, and there were 13 competitors from Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama. And uh, it, it was pretty impressive as to what you did. Again, only eight days to kind of prepare for this. So it, was there, it, within those eight days, you know, what were you really doing uh, to kind of prepare yourself? Was you doing each event in, in one day, or was you kind of just knocking it out to kind of perfect each one? Um, the way it would go is Tuesdays and Thursdays I had pole vault that I would do and had throws Tuesdays and Thursdays also in – the afternoon because pole vault's at night and I would just work in hurdles and jumps and the long distance somewhere in between there but yeah I would just uh really work on just getting a feel for the yeah. event because we didn't have enough time to really get me good at it yeah. so I just <laughs> had to like figure out how it works and then just pray and rely on athletic ability like to get me there. Learning yeah. a new trick, if you will, because you yeah. kind of had to like learn the, I guess, the way to do it, and then your athleticism obviously allowing you to do it in this True. decathlon to a successful rate. So that's pretty impressive, man. I mean, was there was there any any time where you're like, man, I don't know if I can get this done? Was there any time, like, or was you did you stay positive and kind of keep your confidence up? Yeah, I was I was staying positive for. The whole time. I was trying my best to, at least, because, you know, eight days is not a long time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Some people train for this their whole lives, yeah. I'm well, sure, I, I since mean, they were you, little. Yeah, so um, that's pretty impressive. But, you know, I obviously, got a question too. Okay, obviously you've got a lot of people that's in your corner. You've got, you know, your dad right. is, a, is a big supporter of you, and you've got a lot of trainers and coaches that are kind of helping you kind of learn these events as you go throughout this process. So talk about some of those. Um, obviously, there's my dad, and uh, – my jumps coach for a couple of years now, three years, uh, Eric Cooper. He had been, we've been going hard on the jumps for a long time now. <laughs> and he's been starting to teach me other things as well. Uh, my high school trainer, TJ, he taught me the basics and the throws. And Monty Orchard, the, the, who teaches the pole vaulters at Central, he taught me the basics in pole vault. And I've been training with him. And uh, my coach Rick Markham yeah. teaching me on the hurdles, and so it's a lot of, a lot of coaches. I guess when you do these events, is there an order to them? Like you can't go, okay, no, I'm in the mood to do this. So, is there like an uh, an order? Yeah, it's uh, it's split up into two days, five okay. events per day. You got 30 minutes in between each event. Day one is uh, you go to hurdles, then you go straight to long jump. 30 minutes after that. Then after that, you go to shot put and then high jump, and then you finish with the 400, and that's the end of day one. And then day two, you do the 100-meter dash. Then you do discus. Then you do pole vault, then javelin, and then you finish it up with the 1500. Okay, give everybody an idea about the javelin. That is basically your throwing. It's just a spear chucking. Spear. Okay, that's pretty cool. How like heavy is that is what I'm wondering. You know, you look at it and you see this metal spear and you think that it would be pretty heavy. It's actually it's actually it's pretty not. light, yeah. See, it's, I it's thought it was really heavy. Hang on, it's light for him. It okay, doesn't yeah, it be it light be for really us. Heavy yeah. for no, me. It's <laughs> no, it really is. It's hollow on the inside. It's light. Okay. So how high did you jump in the uh, pole vault? Uh, I think 10-4 because it was metric. So the metric conversion went over to 10 foot 4. And I went out at ten. I went out at ten foot ten. Wow! So whenever you're doing the decathlon, do they take like your best score in each event or your score in each event and kind of combine it to see what your average is? Is that how it works to see where you place? Sort of. It's uh, the the mark you get in that set event. So if I high jump six six and say that gives me five hundred points, then yeah, it would give me five hundred points. Okay. 
So, like, if the next guy jumped 6-6, six, six, then he would also get 500 points. Okay. So, depending on the mark you get is how many points you get for that event. And okay. And then they just add them all up at the end. So, you know, so we're, learning, we're learning some. We huh? are learning. We're like, learning. I'm just so impressed. And I can't imagine 30 minutes between each yeah, event. I like, either. I would probably need I would hours. need 30 days <laughs> to, to get ready for each event. But <laughs> So, you right, currently have some offers uh, from EKU and Navy. And you've got visits scheduled or asked to come visit to Wisconsin, Penn State, Rutgers, Cincinnati, Miami, Louisville, and Western Kentucky. Some big names on there. So, you know, what is the goal for you? What do you want to do? The goal for me, I guess, is obviously want to go to track, get a track scholarship, and I really would like to, uh, okay, number one goal right now, like highest goal ever, is 2028 Olympics. Oh, wow. Okay, there you that go. Be, I'm loving it. That yeah. would be awesome. Well, remember us little people whenever you get there. <laughs> yes. But so, so smaller goals for you. What, what What's that look like? I'm sorry, what was The it? smaller goal for oh, you. Oh, um. Also. To uh, major in business, okay, probably, and just see where that takes me. Well, man, you've got a very uh, broad future ahead of I mean, you. There's some, some very big you've schools got on some there. Some big so. decisions. That's yeah. a lot of schools. So are you going to travel and go meet all the coaches? Are you? D I'm hoping with the pandemics over that you're not having to do all this on Zoom. Are you getting to travel? Yeah, we're getting to travel. Uh, yeah, that's I think good. Coach of Wisconsin is going to come down here. Oh wow, that's and cool. Visit me. Uh, that means he really much. wants you then whenever they travel that <laughs> oh far. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully they run indoors. Oh, uh, yeah. It's very cold. Yeah, yeah those, <laughs> those big schools have indoor facilities. Yeah. What, do you, what are you looking for in a school? I mean, do you have something that you that you really want me to do? Right. Do you want to be closer to home? or? Uh, for the most part, I would I would like to be close to home. But it uh, unless they have, like, something that I would really like, like, a too good to be true yeah. sounding deal, then I would like to be sort of close to home. I don't know. It's just yeah. I mean, yeah, he's I got think a big family. I mean, does. they're gonna it go and close. watch. Yeah. I mean, he's his sisters. I know they'll go oh, wherever you here. go. But and, I, and I know his dad really will. I mean, I've talked to his dad several times on Facebook. If he goes to Wisconsin, I know Dad will be up there quite oh, a bit to watch yes. him. Oh yes, absolutely. He'll be there. Maybe he'll take us with him, and we can all cheer you on. Uh, we'll do the show from <laughs> up there. We'll go up there and do the show from That's up there. That's exactly right. Well, I'm super excited. And how many schools was that? That's uh, there's, like there's two schools. that's already been offered, and there's like five or six that are still, and, uh, and there'll be more coming along. I mean, what you're just uh, you're going into your senior year, right? Yeah, yeah going so into you, senior. So you got some time to still kind of draw some interest in, and you know, I, I know whenever you you hear some of these names, they're bigger names. But like, what are some big names from in, in like track and field? What are some of the bigger names college wise that that you that you would like to see maybe reaching out to you in track usually the sec yeah is the olympics pretty much so like lsu uk really everyone in yeah. the sec as it like, is in every other sport just, right? yeah <laughs> but big 10 like wisconsin okay and ohio state those are big names so well good deal well great yeah. so you've got we've what, the got end? some local kids that have run in the sec and have done some track i know the fields kid that set some records yeah. and stuff he ran at uk so we've got some swimmers local here that went to uk we've got we we need to get a hold of that coach he needs to be calling you <laughs> so you've got the junior olympics coming up on july 31st and august 1st so right. what's what's it look like between now and then as you get ready for that we're gonna be training pretty hard. <laughs> we uh, we got up and at probably are you are training. We hard. are. Yeah. yeah. We, we got up at <laughs> we got up at six o'clock today. Went to Danville and ran a lot. Okay. Worked on my running. Got me in shape. So, yeah, five to six days a week. Sometimes two days or sometimes twice a day. Yeah, two a days. So like, yeah. Two a days. Gotcha. Right. Wow. So Good we're deal. going pretty heavy at it. Well, listen, Braden, so after that is over with, you got to come back on with us and let us oh know yeah. how it went and uh, and keep us up to date with everything because sure. I know that uh, we're expecting big things out of you, my man, and, and we, you've already shown what you can do. Keep working hard. We appreciate you coming you over to talk to us. You didn't ask about okay. the hair. Well, I'm a little bit jealous of it. I yeah. looked at it, and yeah. I'm, I'm jealous of it, so I'm, I'm not going to get into it. I know no matter what I do, my hair will never look that Ladies good. Ladies man right there. Yeah. you got to stay focused <laughs> on track, but it's the hair. It's the hair. <laughs> That's Braden Carson. He is going to be competing in the Junior Olympics coming up on July 31st and August 1st. Uh, Braden, good luck, my man, and thank you for coming over with thank us. Thank you. One more commercial break, folks. When we come back, Frank Parks is here from Berea Football. We'll talk to him on the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show. 
We have large SUVs. We have the best selling SUV in America. We have great brand new trucks. Come in today because we want to buy your cars, trucks, or SUVs. we made the move to Madison County where we are today. With the support of our family, customers, and community, we have continued to grow in the outdoor power industry. With a full line of products from Cupcadet, Grasshopper, Echo, and Shindawa, we can help you tackle your yard so you can enjoy it with your family. Bishop Small Engine Repair, where our focus is our customer. Stop on in, 119 North Estill Avenue in Richmond. We can't wait to see you. Support your favorite team with apparel from Campus Warehouse in Richmond. Whether you're an EKU fan or you're a part of the Big Blue Nation, Campus Warehouse has something for you. Stop by and see their new line of old row t-shirts because, guys, we know Saturdays are for the boys. Plus, they have the cutest seasonal tees for the ladies. And Campus Warehouse now carries the new line of tees for the kiddos as well. Visit CampusWarehouseRichmond.com or stop by their location in the Richmond Center next to Buffalo Wild Wings. Who makes the best meal in Richmond? Nuevo Vallarta. Friendly service, a place that's good for kids and good for groups. Head to Nuevo Vallarta on Big Hill Avenue in Richmond. Nuevo Vallarta is known for warm hospitality, great prices, great food, and the best margaritas and fajitas in town. Doesn't a huge 32-ounce ice-cold beer sound great? Start with an appetizer, order a la carte, or choose from their huge menu of Mexican favorites for grown-ups and kids. Nuevo Vallarta on Big Hill Avenue in Richmond. Patrick O'Neill has been serving Central and Eastern Kentucky since 1995. When someone is accused of something they didn't do, or when a good person makes a mistake, they need the best representation they can find. And that's Patrick O'Neill. Whether it's criminal defense, social security, disability, personal injury, workers' compensation, or deeds and wills, when you need legal advice, trust the expertise of Patrick O'Neill. He will get you the money you deserve. His office is located in Jackson, but Patrick practices all over Central and Eastern Kentucky. For more information or for a free consultation, call 606-66. Back here on the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show, Samantha Burford, Michael Watkins here with you folks. And we are joined now by Frank Parks, the new head coach at Berea. Coach, I mean, we talked to you before on the show, but it's good, good to have you in here in person as That's we right. kind of promote Berea football and uh, your first year there. So let's talk about how things have gone. You know, obviously getting hired during the middle of a pandemic wasn't easy, but uh, how has it been since you've been hired over there at Berea? Well, things have been going well over there. Uh, we have a great administration. Uh, things that been put in place that you know that I thought was uh, needed to progress the program. So uh, we've been fortunate to get things uh, that we need in place. Uh, the kids have been great. They've been working hard. Uh, we talked a lot about being consistent in their hard work. Yep. Because it's a hard working group for us, a core group, but being consistent, making sure you're there every day, and doing those things that will uh, lend to success is uh, very important and things that we're trying to hammer in to the uh, players as a staff. Yeah. Well, Samantha, you know, obviously last year uh, wasn't a, the kind of season that Berea wanted. Coming off a season no. they had the year before where it was like a rejuvenation of the program, right. but now a third head coach in three years. Three so years. what are you telling the guys to kind of – Get over that hump with them because, you know, you're a third different voice in three years, a third different system maybe in three years. So what are you guys trying to do to make it easier within this transition? Well, one of the biggest things is the mindset. You know, we've really been preaching about having that mindset of, you know, you can have success if you're willing to put in the work. You know, just changing that mindset that this is not, you know, the same old Berea. It's not the typical uh, Berea program that uh, we have going on here. We're really trying to build it you know, yeah. as a uh, legitimate program, a viable option for, you know, maybe kids to come and uh, play in our program and to get a great education. So one of the biggest things is that mindset switch. Yep. And, you know, a lot of it also we talked about accountability, holding your teammates accountable and yourself accountable. You know, if people miss, you know, reach out to your uh, friends and your teammates because positive peer pressure is the best oh, uh, yeah. pressure. So, you know, we've really been preaching that and, you know, we had a mini camp uh, 
three weeks before de- three weeks uh, it ended right before a dead period and you know each week uh, we had more than we had the previous week so oh wow you know it was it was a good turnout at the end and you know uh, we just kept preaching about that accountability and that mindset and you know the kids took uh, to that very well. Well, that's a big thing when you're at a school like Berea. I went to Jackson City. I mean, it's just, it's just like Berea. That's what I was going to The ask. numbers are a big thing. They're not I mean, there. The numbers so you, aren't So there. you want to get you know, the more kids you have out there, even if, like, you've never played football before, come out because we need as many numbers as we can get, right? That's what I want to know because right. are you able to recruit and get more out there? Well, that Within the school. Right, right, right. That, right, that right. is big, the numbers aspect. And with it being a the pandemic, they didn't uh, go to school till yep. late. So – Really been able to get inside the building and talk to kids was uh, tough, but that's why I always preach to uh, the current players about, you know, recruit your friends in the building to come out and give it a try. And we got a couple out, and, you know, we continue to uh, build a roster. You know, my biggest thing is at least try to get 30 kids out yep. uh, this upcoming s- season. We close, probably need about four or five more oh, uh, that's to good. get there. Yeah. But I think we can get there by the time – the first game starts. So, you know, it's just, you know, that roster is big because you want to have a little bit of depth. Even though it's yeah. a smaller school, you still want to be able to have, you know, a couple uh, kids that can play multiple positions and, you know, someone goes down. So but if you have a smaller roster, it, it's tough. Right. And it puts you in the bind. Well, and so many of them play multiple sports. So yeah. all these athletes at Berea Community, they whether they're doing baseball or basketball, so how is it being able to, you know, work, get ready for the spring season when there's some of them are playing baseball? Well, you know, that's one reason why we didn't do spring ball, and I kind of had a mini camp uh, the first week of uh, June, three weeks, because so many of us playing uh, baseball and a lot of them play basketball, which I think is great. I think that's yeah. the best thing about a smaller school. You're not getting pulled in all these different directions to specialize. Everyone knows that. You know, you need each of these kids to play multiple sports. So it, it's it's great in my eyes. You know, I play multiple sports in high school, and I think it's, you know, you don't get burnt out even when you play multiple sports. So I think it's a great problem to have right. because kids getting uh, other skills from other sports and getting that discipline and structure and not just hearing the same voice over and over again. So I think it's a very positive uh thing about being at a small school talk about some of your players you got the Coburn kid coming back at quarterback and I know I've seen really good things from him you know on on, on social media it seems like he's getting a lot of, of publicity during the offseason and a player that we fell in love with we nicknamed him Bam Bam Cunningham <laughs> with Jaden when he was a sophomore I mean yeah the season that, that he kid. had obviously running the football but he was making impacts on defense as well you know wrecking havoc on opposing backfields and then the wrecking havoc in his own backfield when he had right. the ball so talk about your some of the players that you're bringing back and, and what kind of system you're going to try to run with 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 those guys well i think you know with colburn like you said he has improved tremendously just through those three weeks of uh workouts he had a very live arm it's just some fundamental things that need to be yeah. corrected and he has looked pretty good toward the end of camp correcting those things and you know, I think we can get a lot of accomplished. He's a little bit more athletic than people think. Yeah. So we'll be able to do some things. Good size for a quarterback. Him. Yes, great size. Uh, height-wise, he put on some uh, weight, some muscle with uh, the conditioning program uh, we installed. So I think his ability will give us flexibility to do a lot of things. Cunningham, like you talked about, uh, spoke to him several times about he's probably just as effective, not more effective, on the defense yeah. side of the ball with his strength and his ability to run um, and cause havoc in the uh, other uh, offenses' backfield. So I think he'll be a great two-way player. You have Emil Cruz, who I think yep. is a big-time game-breaker. You know, we got to find different ways to get the ball in his hands. He wide receiver for you? Yes, he'd be in the slot. You know, he'd be able to run the ball a little bit, yeah. um, jet sweeps, just quick screens out in routes. So – he got a lot of versatility that we'll be able to use and put him in different situations. Uh, Clay Martinez, who's uh, a very good two-way player, probably the best defensive back coming back, very smart kid. He's probably our leader of the team. You okay. Know, he, he hasn't missed a workout. He's uh, always encouraging guys. So he would be, you know, that leader that we need on the field. And you got some guys on the line, uh, Connor Gilbert, Joe Collins and some other guys who have uh, done real good throughout the minicamp and the weight program. So I'm looking forward to uh, 
getting into the season of coaching these guys. You know, there was a I did actually a middle school game over there for Bria Middle School football last year, and the Sloan kid has he been out doing anything this summer with you guys? Uh, he did a lot of basketball. Yeah, he was. You know, he's a he's, he's a good basketball player so too. He's basketball, he's supposed to be out once we start back July twelfth, but. Uh, I've spoken to him throughout. And yeah. He could be a big asset. He could, season. even as a freshman. He, he's a, I went and watched him play a couple of middle school basketball games, and he has some talent, yep. very athletic, good height. So he could have a big impact as a freshman playing at wide receiver. Yeah, and he, good, good size and good speed. And, and at that position, that's two really important things for you. And whenever you don't have a ton of depth, as you said, you know, he could come in and maybe compete for a spot for you as a freshman. So I'm excited to see what you guys have got. Uh, what kind of offense do you have? Have you put in your system already, or is that something you'll, you'll do when you guys come back out the dead period? Actually, we have put in the system offensively and defensively, you know, we big on creating mismatches. You know, yep. a lot of people will say a spread, but we have some things where we'll run some play action. Uh, we're going to run some inside, outside zone. So we'll be multi dimensional, but it'll be simple for us, but complicated for our people to defend because we're going to try to find mismatches and take advantage of those things. Okay. You know? Yeah. We'll so use. offense will be a little different than what we're used to seeing at Berea, right? Right. Well, a little bit last year, you've seen them in the gun a yeah. little bit at the early beginning, and then they transition a little bit. So we're being more in uh, shotgun. Uh, we're better getting the center uh, as well. When but you we're need being it. more in shotgun, uh, three or four wide uh, a lot of the times. Uh, I have a young kid, Tommy Benderman, that uh, I think would be a real good tight end. And I think once he's get acclimated and ready for the high school, I think he'd be a big asset at that tight end position. So uh, we're able to create – uh, multiple mismatches with different formations. So it's been interesting, and they have been enjoying the offense. And we'll use tempo a lot too, different yeah. type of tempos to, you know, kind of take advantages of the defensive and not allow them to get set and things of that nature. We well, talked about your camp that you have coming up. Do you want to talk about it, kind of promote it for it, tell folks where they can go to sign up for you? Yes, we have a camp, uh, youth camp, 3rd, 8th grade, July 23rd, 6th to 9 o'clock. Um, you can sign up. You can go to our uh, Twitter page, Berea Football Twitter, and it has all the information about going to the Google form and signing up. Or you can come at the day of the camp and sign up. And uh, I think it would be a great experience for the youth to come out, learn some fundamentals, and learn how to play the game of football. And those parents who just need a date night, 6 or 9 o'clock, yeah. they drop them off and – Go, go eat some, some dinner, yep. go to a movie. Well, I've got a four-year-old and an 18-month-old. It's okay if I just drop them off. you got to take care of them. Uh, that'd be a little too <laughs> much for us. I've been through those <laughs> that age group. That's, that's yeah, that, that Twitter account is at Berea underscore football. You folks can go over there and get signed up and uh, get ready for, for the July camp. Again, that's coming up on July 23rd, right? Correct. Yeah, so 6 to 9 p.m. And, uh, and, and listen, I think it's good if you have a, a youngster playing mm -hmm. football, I mean, all the local high schools are doing camps. Send them to all of them. Send I mean, them to the all more football of them. they and can soak in. They're different in. times. So yeah. You can do that. So, I mean, if you've got a kid and, and you're, he already went to the central camp, but I right. mean, he can't go to your guys' camp, right? Right. Absolutely. The, you got three great programs around here yep. now and a very knowledgeable coaches. So, you're going to be able to take something from each of those programs and it's going to improve you as a football player. So, yes, all three of them would be very beneficial to uh, yeah. the youth who wants to learn the game of football. Let's talk about your assistant coaches, some new coaches on the team. Yes. Well, uh, my defense coordinator, Rocky Jones, uh, I coached with him at Madison Central, which established a good relationship, uh, played college ball at Tuscan, very uh, knowledgeable young coach. And uh, we did a lot this past season on the defensive side of the ball. So he's going to run the defense. He has done a great job with the uh, student athletes to date. They seem to take to him very well. So he does a great job with those uh, young men. Robbie Rowley, he was with me when I was at Bryan Station. He was uh, running the offense at that time. He's going to be my co-offense coordinator. I will call the plays, but he will do a lot with uh, installing the offense and the practice planning. Charlie Owens, who would be our uh, offensive line coach, he has a long resume for us coaching. Uh, coached at uh, Garrett, LCA, played at Berea uh, Community High School. Went to Union, so um, uh, it's a big test, resume. Yeah, principal at the middle school at Berea, so he's a big help uh, so far, just with all the other stuff as well as football stuff. 
And then we have John Thomas, who was on staff last year, who's uh, done a great job. He kind of be the head middle school coach and working with the linebackers because we're trying to make sure those both of those programs are intertwined and it's one big program and not yeah. you know, a separate entity. So That's very uh, smart. Yep. So he's kind of the head middle school coach and he will be the uh, linebackers coach. And we have Tony Rose who will help out with the That's running my dude. backs. So uh, he's great with kids, you know. Yeah. So – He's been a big help as well. Yeah, I think with Tony, you really can't find a better guy. I mean, he, he is just one of the nicest guys you can never meet and talk to. And, you know, I, I've known him for years now. And it was lit weird. We, we first you know started talking, and, and we kind of just hit it off right from the bat. But I think that's just how Tony is. It doesn't matter who he meets, that he can just get along with anybody. Yeah, you can't find a person going to talk bad about yep. uh, Tony Rose, you know. He, he really well, I could talk bad about him, but I might have to make some stuff up. <laughs> right, <man>. right. <laughs> and that's what it would be, something made up. But he does a great job. You know, a lot of people around here love him. Yeah. You know, he's been in multiple uh, programs on the middle school level. You know, his dad's led around yeah. here, Chester Rose. So, you know, Tony is a great asset to our program. Uh, let's talk about your schedule. You got six home games this year, which is big, especially as you know for a first-year head coach over there with this new program. So, talk about that. You guys got Harlan County, Nicholas County, and Adair County to kick off the season, and then you've got a couple other games later on in the year against Jackson County, KCD, and then Frankfurt at home as well, and then four four road games for you. So, how important was that for you this season to have those home games in your first year as the head coach? Well, it. it kind of worked out that way at first I was kind of still wanting the traditional five to five but then I looked at it, I said well what better way to get some publicity for a program yeah. to go ahead and take that uh, six game and make it a home game you know you kind of uh, if you start having some success you know people locally would come out yeah. and be able to see you at home you know so having six was end up being very beneficial I think if we can have that success we start off with Harlan Independent um, which I think it's vital to yeah. get a great start. You know, that first game is is important, especially coming off the six, uh, the season they yeah. just had. So, And they had a chance to win that game last year. A couple breaks didn't go their way. So I think it's uh, a great way to kick off our season with uh, a home game against Harley Independent. And I think it's just very uh, important that, you know, vital that, we start off well with that first game. I thought it was a great matchup for us in the beginning of the year. Yeah, that's August 20th, and it's crazy. I mean, we're literally a, you know, a little bit over a month until high school football season starts. I mean, it's just like we went right in from baseball and softball, had a little and bit track. of a break, and, and, and track, which is they just about three weeks ago they had their state yeah. tournament, and now we're moving right into to football season. You know, you've been doing this for a long time, Coach. Uh, what's your favorite part about the off season as you guys are getting ready for the upcoming season? Well, you know, the changes in, in the guys and the student athletes, the growth, seeing them grow as uh, individuals on and off the field. You know, you see a lot of growth between at sophomore and junior year. You know, freshman year is kind of still, especially at the big time level, they play freshman ball, so it's still a middle school field. But once they get to sophomore year, it's kind of yeah. eye-opening to them. And then seeing them be able to grow from sophomores to juniors and juniors to seniors is, is a great feeling just to see them blossom and yep. uh, become young adults. So yeah, I they don't look like middle schoolers anymore. Correct. <laughs> so just to see that growth is is great. Well, we appreciate you coming over here with us, Coach, as always. I love talking with Bereas. And, and, and one thing we've really tried to do is show all the schools some love here. And uh, we appreciate you coming on with us and seeing you in person once again. And yeah, absolutely. When, whenever, before we get the season started, maybe we can, we'll, we'll try to do a season preview. Maybe have you and some of the guys come over and talk about the upcoming well. season. Absolutely. I appreciate all right. you all having me on. That is Frank Parks, the new head coach at Berea. They'll start the season August 20th at home against Harlan County. Don't forget about their camp coming up on July 23rd. Follow at Berea underscore football for more updates about the football team this year over there with Berea. One more commercial break, folks, when we come back. Plenty more to get to on the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show. We have large SUVs. We have the best-selling SUV in America. We have great brand new trucks. Come in today because we want to buy your cars, trucks, or SUVs. I'm Michelle. And I'm Jennifer. 
and in the spring of 1992, Bishop Small Engine Repair was born in our mom and dad's barn in Estill County. Then in the fall of 1992, we made the move to Madison County, where we are today. With the support of our family, customers, and community, we have continued to grow in the outdoor power industry. With a full line of products from Cupcadet, Grasshopper, Echo, and Shindawa, we can help you tackle your yard so you can enjoy it with your family. Bishop Small Engine Repair, where our focus is our customer. Stop on in, 119 North Estill Avenue in Richmond. We can't wait to see you. Support your favorite team with apparel from Campus Warehouse in Richmond. Whether you're an EKU fan or you're a part of the Big Blue Nation, Campus Warehouse has something for you. Stop by and see their new line of old road t-shirts because, guys, we know Saturdays are for the boys. Plus, they have the cutest seasonal tees for the ladies. And Campus Warehouse now carries the new line of tees for the kiddos as well. Visit CampusWarehouseRichmond.com or stop by their location in the Richmond Center next to Buffalo Wild Wings. Who makes the best meal in Richmond? Nuevo Vallarta. Friendly service, a place that's good for kids and good for groups. Head to Nuevo Vallarta on Big Hill Avenue in Richmond. Nuevo Vallarta is known for warm hospitality, great prices, great food, and the best margaritas and fajitas in town. Doesn't a huge 32-ounce ice-cold beer sound great? Start with an appetizer, order a la carte, or choose from their huge menu of Mexican favorites for grown-ups and kids. Nuevo Vallarta on Big Hill Avenue in Richmond. Richmond. Patrick O'Neill has been serving Central and Eastern Kentucky since 1995. When someone is accused of something they didn't do, or when a good person makes a mistake, they need the best representation they can find. And that's Patrick O'Neill. Whether it's criminal defense, social security, disability, personal injury, workers' compensation, or deeds and wills, when you need legal advice, trust the expertise of Patrick O'Neill. He will get you the money you deserve. His office is located in Jackson, but Patrick practices all over Central and Eastern Kentucky. For more information or for a free consultation, call 606 66 Back here on the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show, Samantha Burford, Michael Watkins here with you. And Samantha, you know, we've got a lot of really good athletes here in Madison County. And even though there's not a ton of stuff going on right now, we've seen some of our really good athletes performing well in the offseason. You know, one name that comes to mind, it's just Chesney Lovins. And uh, obviously she was a big piece of that Berea team last year, whether she came off the bench, whether she started at times. Right. She was a very important player for them. And, uh, you know, Chesney is, is a player that's doing really well in summer ball. She's playing some AAU ball, and uh, she's been going to a lot of camps. I saw her. She was at EKU's camp. She was at Rick Bolas's camp and the high potential camp down over there. So she's been very, very busy. Uh, this off season, and I think a lot of our players are. You know, we've seen Jalen Davis from Madison Central playing with, with an AAU team. Jay Rose and I think it was Brett Urslan, and maybe either both or one of the Hudson twins were playing AAU ball. So we've got a lot of really, really good uh, players, and I think that's what has made these teams and these players so successful in recent years is going over to continue. And you know, it's the off season but not taking it as the off season and continuing to work at their craft and get better. Right. And a lot On of these players are doing team. that. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously you can't do anything in high school right now because it is the dead time, yes. dead yeah. period. So everybody's doing their travel balls or travel golf. Golf is huge right yep. now too. Well, this is the third summer playing for Kentucky Premier for Chesney Love, and she has played in Alabama, Indiana, Louisville, and she has four tournaments uh, in July as well. And she just got back from uh, in the Rick Bolas High Potential Blue Chip Exposure Basketball Camp. She was the all-tournament team on there, and she was also the knockout champion. So showing what kind of a shooter she is yes, when winning the knockout well tournament down there. And, you know, with that kind of camp, Obviously, there are some really good shooters and, and basketball players there. Right. So just showing how good that Chesney is. And good for scouts, too. You know, listen, uh, you know, we we're obviously in the, in the off season, moving into football season. But, you know, I, I saw the, you know, Clay Pendergrass did really well in the, the junior program, I think it was, right. this, off, or yes, this weekend. This so, weekend. Uh, you know, he's a golfer. And, and Clay, he was a really good basketball player back in middle school. <laughs> I actually coached against him. But that's how good he is at golf, that he's focusing all his attention now with golf. And you know, I'm sure Kyle Conkleton, the head coach over at Central's golf team, is excited about what kind of uh, future that Clay right. has on the golf and course. And their season will start here soon. Yep, really soon. And <laughs> speaking of golf news, how about Austin Newton? Was just hired yes. as the uh, new golf coach over at Madison Southern. Boys golf coach, Yes, right? the boys golf yes, coach. Yes, they and have a girls golf coach They said, well. Here's what they said about Austin, the, the reason he got this job. 
Anybody that can take Jay Simmons and go win a golf tournament and with win. Jay shows how good that Austin is. So that's why he was hired as the golf coach over at Madison Southern. But yeah. I'll give Jay a good, hard time. Good pictures, too. Yeah. Right? Oh, they yeah. really promoted that. So yeah. that was exciting. And Jay had flip-flops on. I'm assuming he had golf shoes on and switched during to the tournament. Yeah, I think he might have put his flip-flops on for the picture. <laughs> but if he won that tournament in flip-flops, that just shows you how good at golf Jay is. Very athletic. Well, I just talked to both of them. You know, we were over there a couple of weeks ago doing right. a stream for one of their basketball games, and both Jay and, and Austin said that they hadn't really had a chance to play a bunch of golf, yet they go over to Winchester and win a tournament. So <laughs> I don't know if they were maybe just pulling my leg or maybe they are, that's how good they are. They can just, you know, turn it off and turn it on. when they, That's yeah. how good they are at Sometimes golf. Sometimes luck helps, but I think they're both very athletic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I didn't know this. I was talking to somebody this weekend. I can't even remember who it was, and they were talking about Jay, and they said, did you know that Jay played – like three sports at Berea. I said, no, I did not know that. <laughs> no, you know, I didn't know it either. So, but I mean, that just you know, we've got a lot of really good athletes in in the area, and even the ads and the coaches are good athletes as well. But we want to give a special shout out to Chesney Lovins there and what kind of uh, off season she has had, and that young lady is going to be a big piece of a Berea team that. The girls' basketball in the area, you know, we've got the new head the coach over at Model. We had Derek Robinson on a couple of weeks ago. Right. Berea's bringing back everybody from a team that, you know, was really good, went to the all A Classic State Tournament again. And then, you know, Central's really young. They're going to be really good for a long time now with these young players that they have. And then Josh Curtis, you know, you lose Samantha Cornelison, obviously, right. and Lacey Parks. Score. But, you know, and, and Lacey is going to Berea College. They got some young talent coming back as well over at Madison Southern. So girls basketball in Madison County going to be very, very exciting to watch uh, for the next several years, but especially next year when we get into to basketball season again. It's weird to be talking about basketball, girls yeah. or boys, because we're so engrossed right now and ready for football. But, I mean, there's a lot of news out of U.K. basketball, yeah. too, that we don't even talk about Well, anymore. I mean, that's <laughs> you know, we always said we can use a longer show than just an yeah. hour, but we but appreciate it. But coming back at U.K. is pretty exciting. Yeah, yeah it is. I mean, and, and like the NIL thing I think is going to be a big thing, too, the name, image, and likeness. And even for kids, you know, I've already seen Michael Moreno is, I think, he's pro even, you know, Moreno is Coming a guy from Scott County. that might be the most popular EKU basketball player because he's, you know, Kentucky, he's from here in Madison local. County. He's a good player. So I think that uh, he might be the guy for EKU basketball that benefits the most from the NIL. You know, Jamario Brown coming back and, you know, Braxton Beverly transferring down from NC State. Um, those guys might be, you know, Points and, and stats-wise, they might have bigger stats than Moreno, but I think because he comes from Scott County, he might be able to take more advantage of the NIL thing here locally. I would love to have Matt back on, the athletic director, and go, okay, now that July 1st has been here, tell us what's happened. Yeah. Tell us the connection and some of the sponsorships that have rolled in for some of your athletes. Wouldn't well, that be cool to know? Yeah, and you know, we're going to try to get Coach Hamilton on soon. Although they got their their – kids their youth basketball camp coming up here very soon as well and uh for i think it's go big time uh camp.com you can check out eku yeah, hoops July. twitter account uh to get your kids signed up for there but i think the website is go big time hoops or something like that to get signed yeah. up but that's all on the twitter they got a big Facebook sign pages. right there at yeah. the corner of the bypass and lancaster road so check that out Samantha, what, what's uh, you got any big plans coming up this week? I know it's uh, a beautiful week out. Vacations are you? You already had vacation, yeah, all right? I had you didn't vacation, get anything coming up. Went to Charleston, so had a great time. My daughter was actually dancing, so we made. You know, we, to a vacation trip? Yeah, because there were some days, there were two days she didn't dance. So yeah. we went to the beach one day and shopping, you know, King Street, downtown Charleston, and ate some good food. So yeah, I'm all about the food when we go yeah. on vacation, right? Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. a big thing. That is a, a big thing. But lots happening. At well, the if you want Burford some good House. food, folks, Nuevo Vallarta, one of our great sponsors over there on Big Hill Avenue. They're expanding their location here in Richmond to make it bigger so it's more accessible for you. Also, obviously, Jack Burford Chevrolet. Check out jackburford.com for the all the inventory here at it's Jack Burford in. Chevrolet. It's yeah, every day. In. New every vehicles day. arriving daily. And also, uh, Campus Warehouse over in the Richmond Center next to Buffalo Wild Wings. You know, if you're getting excited, you're hearing us talk about EKU sports, yeah. Kentucky sports coming back very soon as well. Get on over to Campus Warehouse. They have officially licensed EKU apparel, all kinds of Kentucky stuff over there as well at Campus and Warehouse. You know what? My shirt that I got in there, red, white, and blue, Rolling Stone shirt. You forgot yeah. to wear it. No, I didn't get to wear it. My children wore it. <laughs> so that's what happens. That's what happens when you don't buy your kids a shirt when you go in there, Samantha. Yeah. You know, it's, I you bought just, it for me. better than that. I bought it for me. Also brought to you by uh, 
uh, Bishop Small Engine Repair over on North Estill Avenue, taking care of all your uh, small engine repair needs. Or if you need a new mower over at Bishop's and the law office of Patrick O'Neill, located over in Breathitt County, but he serves all over Central and Eastern Kentucky. That's the law office of Patrick O'Neill. She is Samantha Burford, folks. I'm Michael Watkins. Our producer tonight was Austin Hanks, and we will see you next Monday. Have a great week from all of us here at the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show.